वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू अनदर लेसन एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द सिनॉप्सिस ऑफ द चैप्टर द साउंड ऑफ म्यूजिक चैप्टर नंबर थ्री फ्रॉम योर बी हाइव बुक पी डी एफ विच आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेट सेंट यू एंड आई होप यू हैव रेड इट already or if not you will be reading now please sit down with a notebook and pen and jot jot down points vital points as we move along this lesson it is amazing to watch evelyn function so effortlessly without hear- hearing hearing the picture that you see on this your screen is that of evelyn and she is a person who is blind and deaf and still she is a percussionist which means she can play instruments like the drum even without hearing them Evelyn in the eyes of other masters of percussion like James Blade so an another master percussionist James Blade what does he tell about her god may have taken her hearing but he has given her some given her back something extraordinary what we hear she feels far more deeply than any of us this is why she expresses music so beautifully and although evelyn cannot function with all her abilities her auditory organ does not function she still can feel the music and this is something extraordinary and that is why she is able to express music so beautifully this is what james blade another percussionist tells about her evelyn glenny this is the name of the girl she is a multi percussionist and has attained mastery almost over a thousand musical instruments despite her hearing being impaired so evelyn glenny is the girl whom we will observe in this chapter who is a deaf girl a blind girl also but still she can play thousand musical instruments that too in a far better way than even those people who can hear because she has learned to feel music through her body instead of hearing through her ears and even though she cannot hear the music she can definitely feel the music through the vibrations that music produces when evelyn was 11 years old it was discovered that she had lost her hearing power due to nerve damage the specialist advised that she wear hearing aids and be sent to a school for the deaf on the contrary evelyn was determined to lead a normal life and follow her interest in music although she was discouraged by her teachers her potential was noticed by master percussionist ron fobs he guided evelyn to feel music some other way than to hear it through her ears this worked well for evelyn and she realized that she could sense different sounds through different parts of her body and this is what we learn about evelyn that she had started becoming deaf when she was 11 years old because her nerve was damaged and 
despite this disadvantage evelyn wanted to lead a normal life and she was discouraged by most but her potential was recognized by ron forbes who was a master percussionist he guided evelyn to feel the music rather than hearing it through her ears and this worked well because she learned to feel the music like even if you stand very near a loudspeaker you can feel the vibration deep in your chest so in the same way if the music is a bit if very loud music can create vibration so much so that music can even break the glass and shatter windows so if we train our body like evelyn even a human being can also start fe- feeling the music once she had overcome this hurdle in her life her career in music began she got admission in the royal academy of music london and scored the highest marks in the history of the academy evelyn says that hard work and dedic- dedication towards her goals helped her achieve success evelyn gives solo performances and even gives free concerts for hospitals and schools in the year 1991 she won the royal philharmonic society's prestigious soloist of the year award evelyn's story is an inspiration for the differently abled who are motivated to fulfill their dreams like she did and in this you will understand students that once she learned to overcome her disadvantage and change it to her advantage by being able to feel music rather than hearing music she was capable enough to get admission in the royal academy of music because she changed her weakness into her strength so much so that she scored the highest marks in the history of the academy and evelyn says that it is all because of her hard work and dedication towards her goal she used to give free concerts for hospitals and schools she was a bit philanthropic in that case and in the year 1991 she won the royal philharmonic society's prestigious soloist of the year award she was even awarded and her story is an inspiration for differently abled people all over the globe that even they too if they are motivated and to hard work they can fulfill their dreams like evelyn has done moving on to part 2 of the sound of music we will study about ustad bismillah khan another musical maestro the shehnai legend <clears throat> but first let us look at these instruments both are in indian instruments one is the pungi and from there emerged the shehnai it was a modification of the pungi which changed it into the shehnai of now bismillah khan who is bismillah khan well he was a great musician who made a valuable contribution to the world of music 
through the playing of his shenai for this he was honored with the highest civilian award the bharat ratna in 2001 he hailed from a family of musicians he improvised many new ragas with the shenai and thus placed it among other classical musical instruments he won accolades on the international level too so bismillah khan he won the bharat ratna in 2001 because it was he who placed shenai as one of the best indian classical instruments because he incorporated many new ragas into his music the mughal emperor aurangzeb banned the playing of the pungi in his royal court as you must have heard he was against music so he had banned the pungi he disliked the sound and so the pungi was termed to be a noise maker a baba tried to improve the pungi stone he got a hollow stem wider and longer than the pungi made seven holes on it and blew into it closing and opening the holes it produced soft melodious music as this instrument had been developed by a barber called nai in india and was placed in the king's court called shah the instrument was named shah nai the shah nai became a part of auspicious occasions it was a part of the group of nine musical instruments that were played at the royal court so students this is how the shehnai came into being it was transformed from the pungi by a barber a nai at it was placed played at the court of the shah the king so its name the shehnai and it became a very important instrument which is played in all the auspicious occasions especially in indian marriages Bismillah Khan was born at Damrao into a family of musicians His grandfather Rasul Baks Khan played at the court of the king of Bhojpur so they were a family of musicians their profession was to play music His father Paigambar Baks and other paternal ancestors as well as maternal uncles were shenai players so all is his paternal family as well as his maternal family were shenai players especially the males and as a child bismillah khan would visit bihar ji temple to sing the bhojpuri chaita for which the king rewarded him with a laddu weighing 1.25 kg just imagine you are a child holding a 1.25 kg laddu in front of you as a reward for singing some uh, the bhojpuri chaita at a temple that is really phenomenal and in temples we do get such prasadams after puja or Now at the age of 3 Bismillah Khan visited his maternal uncle Ali Bakhsh at Banaras he saw him playing the shehnai and was fascinated by it at the age of 5 he started playing learning playing it he would spend hours practicing at the temple of Balaji and Mangal Maiya by the banks of the holy river Ganga the flowing waters of the river inspired him to improvise and Bismillah Khan invented ragas which were considered to be beyond the range of the shenai so students this is what happened this is how a child as young as 3 was introduced into the world of music by his uncle just at the young age of 
थ्री एंड बाय द एज ऑफ फाइव ही वॉज ऑलरेडी प्लेइंग द शेनाई एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग इट एट द टेम्पल ऑफ बालाजी एंड द मंगल मैया बाय द बैंक्स ऑफ द होली रिवर गंगा एंड द वाटर्स फ्रॉम द रिवर इंस्पायर्ड हिम टू इम्प्रोवाइज टू मॉडिफाई द ट्यून एंड टू इन्वेंट रागाज विच ऑलमोस्ट वर कंसिडर्ड टू बी बियॉन्ड द रेंज ऑफ द शेनाई इट वॉज समथिंग मोर मोर वंडरफुल एंड फैंटेस्टिक टू हियर बिकॉज ऑफ आर्ज ऑफ हिम परफेक्टिंग एंड इम्प्रूविंग his music playing abilities like you are also trying to improve your english abilities as well as your other subject abilities at the age of 14 he performed at the allahabad music conference and his talent was appreciated by ustad in 1938 he started performing from the lucknow station of the all india radio the day india gained independence on 15th august 1947 bismillah khan performed from the red fort and greeted the country through his shenai he he recited raag kafi which was followed he played the raag kafi which was followed by pandit jawahar lal nehru's famous trist with destiny speech so students this is another important fact in the lesson that before even just before india got independence 15th august 1947 just before this speech of the pm pandit jawahar lal nehru he played from the red fort which was transmitted through all india radio the raag kafi through his shenai because it is considered auspicious instrument Bismillah Khan performed all around the world his first foreign performance was in Afghanistan where the king was so impressed that he gifted him many souvenirs Bismillah Khan composed music for two films Hindi film titled Koon Juthi Sehnai directed by Vijay Bhatt and Kannada film titled Sanadi Apanna by Vikram Srinivas So he was not just acclaimed and celebrated locally and nationally but he was recognized and acknowledged all over the world the entire global musical community were very pleased with him and his foreign performances so much so that the king gifted him many souvenirs and bismillah khan even composed music for two films gunjuti senai and sanadi apanna which you can still watch and view i suggest in such times of the lockdown if you have a music musical instrument at home you may practice it because now is the best time to develop your musical skills and talents as well he was the first indian to perform at the lincoln center hall in the united states of america he also performed at montreal cannes and tokyo in tehran an auditorium was named after him tahir mosqui ustad bismillah khan so he was the first indian to perform at london center hall and he also performed at cannes 
in Tokyo and in Tehran an entire auditorium was named after him. Ustad Bismillah Khan said that music was India's richest heritage and had to be taught to the children. Although he had travelled all over the world, he was attached to Damrao and Banaras. Once a student asked him to set up a Shehnai school in US and promised to recreate the temples of Banaras there. Bismillah Khan asked him whether he would transport the river Ganga also as he was attached to it as well. So once one of his students offered him to set up a Shehnai school in US and he because Ustad was hesitant and everybody knew that he loved the temples of Banaris, he said that he would make the replicas there in US as well. To which Bismillah Khan uh, replied whether he could transport, he could take the river Ganga to the US as well because he loved river Ganga also and this meant that he would not be leaving the country because he was very much in love with his nation and he was a patriotic person. Bismillah Khan is a true example of secular India as being a Muslim. He played the Shehnai at the Kashi Vishwanath temple for him music was above religious barriers yes he was a secular person and even though he was a muslim he still went to kashi vishwana temple and played the shenai and as a child also he used to sing at the bhojpuri chaitha at the temples so that much for today students i request you to please read the text go through this video and if there is any doubt in you being able to comprehend the chapter please write it down in the comments below and please stay tuned uh, complete your texts and complete all your assignments regularly thank you for watching see you again